So it's a bit of an odd video today really. Uh, it's more like uh, there's only one fish that I caught. Uh, but I wanted to give a little idea of, of what it's like sort of getting the bait ready uh, and spending a week down here on the coast. So there's not an action-packed loads of fish sort of session. Uh, it's just more like a video diary of uh, my week ending up with one fish, although it was something that I've been after for a while and something I managed to target and get. Appreciate all of you for watching. Uh, if you don't like all the bits in between, you can fast forward to uh, the fish catching bit, which is at that timing on the video when I get around to do it. Um, thanks very much for watching. It's always worth having a little look along the high tide mark if there's any clues about the fishing. To be honest, <laughs> usually it's uh, a lot of plastic rubbish that you find. And I will pick a few bits up and stick them in the bin on the way up. It looks like a ray there that's been filleted. Thornback skate as they're known locally. Spider crab leg. <laughs> Looks like a smooth hound or something there. Nice to see some black headed gulls as well, not just your herring gulls. Usually indicates rougher weather out at sea. I think these are turnstones. They definitely like coming up and stealing the lugworm when you leave them on the beach. <laughs> so it's a bit tricky to get the lug at the moment because the tides are short. And by short, I mean the um, difference between a high tide and a low tide uh, is less opposite of spring tides basically out there somewhere somewhere there should be some lugworm uh, i'm going to give it a go all i've got is a spade from the garden let's go and see if we can find some bait Flipping that lugworm out a little bit. Have to go and retrieve it. Well, we've covered this before. Um, as I <laughs> willingly admit, I'm not the best digger in the world. Combination of uh, a bad back and uh, not really doing too much over the years. But you usually get something when you've got a cast and the blowhole this close together. And imagine drawing a line between the two and you're digging trying to get them in that U-shaped burrow. Of course a much better idea would be to use a, a wide pronged fork uh, for this sort of sand. When it's really wet then maybe a spade, shovel, um, as I say. And this is actually wet enough to use a bait pump really. So if you're looking for top tips for bait digging, I'm probably not the best bet here. <laughs> but I do get enough to go fishing anyway. It was a bit hard to come by today and normally there's lots of casts next to blowholes but you can see plenty of casts not quite knowing where to dig. Any experts out there I will gladly take your tips. You can see there's a lot of casts not too many of the blowholes which 
makes uh, digging a little bit harder for me not knowing exactly where the worm is not that you ever know exactly where it is obviously also noticed the size of the cast doesn't really correspond to the size of the worm I was getting but we did have enough so this venue might be familiar to a lot of you uh, back at Hastings Pier again went there last week I'll give it another go so we're back on Hastings Pier again <laughs> Decided yesterday that I'd dig my own bait locally and we're going to use this bait here, Hastings Pier and it's, as you can see, it's a lovely day for once uh, the sun's come out we're going to pick our spot on the pier Well, we're looking south here, down towards the end of the pier I'm basically going to be fishing two rods. This one here, this is the slosh. I've got 25 pound main line on there, uh, no leader. And then I'm going to use the bass rig that we use, uh, my real simple one, uh, with I think it's 60 pound line today, because uh, we're going to be after the conga. And hopefully, hopefully I'll get a live pout and just drop that down the back of the pier. Really got to watch that reel and rod today. There's something last week. So that'll be on one rod and um, we're also going to put some uh, of that lug that we've just dug out at distance as well see if we can pick up some pouting maybe even a whiting so first things first always put the drop net down first <laughs> you never know you might get something on the first drop drop net down and I've just got some uh, rubby dubby uh, some ground bait there uh, old mackerel heads guts and stuff and I'm going to drop that down that's just going to fall down off the bottom of the drop net uh, and hopefully attract a conga of course it's quite rare to have a conga during daylight but the smaller ones the strap ones as we call them might be about and I'd love to get one in daylight simply because it's going to be easier to film I think So this is the continental rod. I'm getting a few bites on here. Didn't actually catch anything. Keep missing these whiting bites. I'm not too bothered to be honest. Really, it's just out for catching a bait. Usual, usual faces on the pier. Nice to see. It was quite a quiet day today, uh, fishing wise. There was a few place caught, pouting, and plenty of these, although not in massive numbers as there have been previously. Can you see what it is yet? It's actually the uh, angler fishing to my left has got someone to cast across her line, which made it a bit tricky. I managed to retrieve it. Know what it is? Yeah, it's a whiting. <laughs> Don't knock them though, they put a good old rattle on the rod. That's better than nothing. Conga. Conga. Yeah, hand line it. Yeah, yeah I'll hand line this one. Yeah. Hang on, put it back. Let me check the uh, film's running. Oh, you put it back. <laughs> put it back. Coming off. 
Still, I'm Is it filming? Yeah. What did you catch that on, Matthew? Uh, that was with a live whiting, thanks to Baldy. Yeah. It was, it's still alive. Yeah. Here it comes. It's well beautiful. done. Nice. Nice conger eel. Yeah. Paste him here. Yeah, let me get this sauce. Uh, how far is he? Is he on the lip? He's, he's right in there. No, just, just, just if he's if he's right down. Yeah, yeah. Laugh a little bit here. Everyone lending a hand to get it unhooked. They're tough things, these congers. Eventually, we managed to get the hook out. Everyone lending a hand. Thanks very much, guys. And that one went back. So, continued fishing on the other rod using the lugworm. Good thing about these continental rods, you can just use three ounce leads. As long as you can hold bottom with those, uh, you can cast it right out. Another place as well, a place caught next to me, not my fish. Although this is just a bin I've got a video of, um, this is really good actually. This is the line recycling scheme that they're using on Hastings Pier. And they tuck it away behind the fishing hut and you can recycle braid and normal line, mono line, fluorocarbon, what have you. All goes in there. You have to take the metal work out as well. But uh, it's a really good idea uh, so even if you find some on the beach and you want to dispose of it and it gets recycled pop it in the bin on Hastings Pier you're not really meant to use put your rod directly on the wood here um, I you tend to use a tripod normally that's quite a good idea just to keep the rod safe and there you've got those little flexible clips as well Actually, the water clarity, uh, this is the clearest it's been for a while. It's quite good to see. The bait that the conga was on was a live whiting that someone gave to me. And I uh, used that. Um, and I used a super simple bass rig that we've shown in a previous video. 60 pound line. Um, but we had the lug that we dug as well, that uh, you saw earlier. But as a second best bait there, I was going to either use flappers or a mackerel head. Uh, looking at the size of that conger's mouth, might be better off with a flapper. Uh, but I interchanged the live bait with a mackerel head as well. Uh, that's more likely to be a sole or a flounder than a place, isn't it? Because a place would be going on that. A white yeah. would still be rattling it a bit. Oh, a fish yeah. might be that. On the rod tip. So for the continental rod, I'm using the lighter leads as well, grip leads. And then if anyone's interested about how to hold the worms onto these uh, three hook flappers, particularly if you're using frozen baits, don't like frozen baits, occasionally I'll use them. Um, but you can do this with fresh worms and wor as well. A um, couple of ideas you might want to try. Uh, you might have some better ideas just to keep the worm up the hook as well um, rather than it all sagging down into the gape of the hook just try using the um, the tail end there the, the bit that's sticking out um, you might want to cut it a bit shorter that can sometimes uh, particularly if that's thicker line that can hold the worm up as well um, not so good using that but it might be better using one of these bait anchors
and you can see obviously how it works uh, you put it on facing like the arrows facing down towards the hook thread that along the snood and then of course when you thread your uh, the worm up the point of the hook and up it's going to stick on those now you secure that using um, you can use power gum or a little stop knot uh, and beads maybe where I'm pointing there uh, and then the idea is the worm will sit there and not fall all the way down to the gape of the hook that's the theory anyway I thought I'd give these a go at some point does anyone use them uh, can anyone recommend them uh, the other way I do it particularly when I've got three or four worms is of course uh, the panel rig the simplest would be something like that so you thread it the worm up the first hook then bring that second hook down um, we'll look at how to do that as we get into some winter fishing um, just sort of playing around really different ways to keep that worm, worm secure another way that I thought of doing is um, and has worked as well with a shorter worm if you've got a sequin if you run that sequin down it obviously in the middle of the sequin is a hole push that over the knot and that sequin will stay in place um, but what you can do is you run the obviously you're going to run the worm all the way up there and it just stops the worm falling down onto the hook again uh, you can just cut the sequin a little bit if it's too wide for the worm that actually does work quite well and then you can do a similar sort of thing further up the line so you just attach the sequin between two um, crimps I'm using oversized crimps here just so you can see it a little bit better so you crimp those two together thread that up to where the, the worms going it should reasonably hold that worm in place so that when you cast uh, it doesn't fall down onto the hook just something that you might, either might want to try it or you might have a better idea of doing it as well good fresh worms don't generally have a problem Oh yeah, it's got one, a little one. Place. You see the seal. And it's getting a few little rattles from the, uh, what I think's whiting. Didn't manage to land them though. So I got my target fish anyway, which was the conger, and uh, managed to get that in daylight, and also see one on the south coast as well. There've been a few recently. I knew I was in for a chance. I lost this particular whiting, I think. So we've had some really good comments uh, from the last video. This is the one we did on the pier last time, so last Friday. Um, thanks ever so much for these comments. I thought I'd read a few out uh, because we've got some really good um, experienced anglers plus some excellent questions from beginners as well. Um, I can't read them all out, I'm afraid. Uh, fishing Bug, who's got his own fishing channel, uh, well worth a look as well. He, he uploads quite regularly. He says, another great little video. Thanks, uh, mate. <laughs> Same sort of species being caught a bit further west along the coast. I think it's down uh, Worthing Way or something. Uh, no, northerly winds next week. Uh, still no signs of the northerly winds though this way. Uh, could be a chance for a few more bass on lures. And actually if you have a look at the water clarity, there's always a little bit of a chance, even though we're into November almost. Turbo Duckhead says, does crimping not risk damaging the line? Um, it can do if you do it wrong or you do it with pliers, normal pliers. Uh, you need to use the like the rounded uh, pliers instead um, but those super soft ones that we used last week uh, they were absolutely fine you can use those that's fine 
Uh, Jay Sutton says, love your videos. Where do you park and how much do they charge? I actually park up near the White Rock Theatre. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, can you teach me how to reel in that fast at 3.39? The benefits of speeding up the video there. Uh, there's a lot of people, Brian Cox in particular, used to have uh, some good memories of fishing on Hastings Pier. Thanks for your comments. Uh, Pistol Pete said he used to love sea fishing, but there's hardly any fish left in the North Sea due to factory ships standing in the winter months. Not getting many fish wasn't for me. And he's gone down the carp scene. I assume there's a lot more people that have done that, actually. Um, although there is a bit of an ebb and a flow with sea fishing. Sometimes you'll have periods where you're catching a lot of good fish. So don't give up. There's some good fish still to be caught, but I appreciate the sentiment. Um, commercial angling, particularly those big factory ships, can be a real problem. Uh, many a cold night fishing on Old Hastings Pier. That's Nicholas KV. Thank you, Nicholas. He's got some great uh, He's got some great uh, fish there. Five pound plus cod. Uh, he's had 11, 11 pound using sprats for baits. A little way off that. Uh, he actually lives in Australia, so. He's probably better off staying there, isn't he, than drizzly old England. <laughs> okay, I'll just do a couple more. Um, I did ask a question about how you how you all feel about using live baits, and generally it's pretty positive, um, not too much of a big issue, although we do get some anti-fishing people go quite hard on me uh, when I use live baits. Uh, Colin Travis says he doesn't see any issues with using live baits. With people that question the use of live baits, they should realise whatever from the sea you use will be hunted by another predator. He goes on to talk about that, and that's quite an interesting point. It's a harsh environment anyway. Where can you buy day tickets for the pier? Another question that's come in from Ian uh, Bickerstaff. Basically, uh, they come and get your, your tickets for the pier. There's so many comments here. I really do appreciate it, everyone. Uh, Medway Sea Fishing also said nothing wrong with live baiting as well. Um, so thanks ever so much for all these comments. They really do keep me going, uh, keep me motivated. Thanks very much. I just wanted, as well, we get some really good comments coming onto the community tab, and you can find the community tab at the top of the uh, homepage of the YouTube video. Again, we've had a few comments about the conga in today's video, so I did a, a little sort of uh, clue as to what was going on on today's video. Um, and I love these conga stories as well. Um, I reckon it was about five pounds. I'm not sure. What do you reckon? Sometimes I'm guilty of holding it too close to the camera. <laughs> so yeah, again, thanks ever so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate these comments, questions. You've got a great sense of humour out there as well. Um, by all means, anything that you think we should show on the videos, uh, then do let us know. Thanks for watching. So that was a couple of days ago now. Um, and then just yesterday, when the weather turned, believe it or not, I saw some mackerel shoals out in the, uh, in the water chasing the white bait. And uh, despite this water clarity, you look at this water, really quite cloudy, it's not as clear as it looks. And managed to get into some mackerel as well. Great fun on, on the single lure, using the Dexter wedge here. So yeah, the mackerel are still around in, in October, towards the end of October. Had them right into November last year.